Many of us have seen or experienced the joy that Star Citizen's flight model can bring, and the pain. Every ship offers a slightly different flight experience both in space and in atmosphere. But that experience is still lacking in some ways, because our ships currently are flying wrong. It might be obvious considering the game is still in development, but what if I told you the fundamentals surrounding flight are going to change quite a bit? And the way we choose our ships for missions, transportation, or even ownership will probably change with them. Let me tell you how the Star Citizen flight model works and how it's going to completely change in the future. And for the chance to win a 400i multi-person luxury exploration ship with a copy of the game, make sure to stick around until the end of the video. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. The current flight model is one that has changed over the years for better and for worse. But what's always been true is that there's a distinct difference between flying in space and flying in atmosphere. As we'll dive into later in the video, the difference between these models will only grow, and if you don't know how they'll differ, you might end up getting a ship that isn't entirely suited for your style of gameplay. The first thing to know about regarding flight in Star Citizen are the thrusters. Every ship has a different thruster layout with vectors firing in all directions. Each one produces its own sound effects and force, and can be damaged and changed the way your ship handles and sounds. Each thruster can, thus, move the ship in all directions equally based on the size and number of thrusters on that side of the ship, giving it a Newtonian model of flight. Whenever you maneuver your ship, you'll see the feedback of what you're doing accurately displayed by all of the thrusters. And if you damage, destroy, or disable those thrusters, you will notice the immediate impact to your flight control. You can also see these thrusters turning to accommodate your controls in real time when pitching or rolling. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to thrusters, and we'll get a little bit back to that later. But if you want to learn more, I'll point you towards the design document that describes them on the Star Citizen website. But the basics that you need to know are they accurately modeled and simulated across all surfaces of the ship, with strengths depending on what needs to happen on that side of the ship. For instance, rear and bottom thrusters are very powerful, while top thrusters, not so much. Of course, along with thrusters, the mass of your ship plays a huge part in how it performs as well. Large ships are much more sluggish to change direction, unless they're specifically designed to be agile for their class. And while this currently doesn't always ring true and doesn't take cargo into effect just yet, it's still something that should be considered when flying around in the game. And then there's boost, which is exactly what it sounds like. This functionality allows you to apply boost to any thruster output in any direction, strafing up, down, left, right, rolling, slowing down, or punching forward. You'll have a limited amount of time to make the use of this self-replenishing performance booster, but you'll also have power capacitors that allow you to prioritize these boosters and get them to replenish faster while flying. And while you are exploring all of these quirks of flight in Star Citizen, you'll be working with various control settings and readouts, you can use different indicators on screen to see how many G's you are pulling. Spoilers, you pull a lot. And you can set your maximum speed, rate of acceleration, and flight assistance mode to better customize your experience. There are several worthwhile tutorials on YouTube to help you understand these aspects. Now, spaceflight is where many of us spend most of our time in-game. And the flight model in space is good, but also weird. You're dealing with a Newtonian flight model, mostly, but there are some weird moments you'll run into in the current game. You can apply thrust in any direction, and if you decouple your flight assist system, which we will talk about soon, you'll keep moving in whatever direction you started in. But at the same time, this does not remain true for pitch, roll, or yaw, only translational movement. In a similar fashion, you won't be able to go faster than a set speed limit per ship. This obviously helps with balance, but can be a bit annoying and feels a little unsim-like. When you or somebody else's ship blows up in space, it also won't maintain its momentum at the moment, which can be a bit jarring. The same is true for dropping objects or jumping out of moving ships. Now, back in 2016, this was acknowledged as a bug, and retaining momentum is pretty important in a game like this, but it might be too difficult, so I'm not sure what the plan is at this point, and we'll be keeping an eye on it. Finally, regarding spaceflight, you have quantum travel. 
This is your quick travel mode in Star Citizen, but it isn't a loading screen. Quantum travel allows you to fly at thousands of kilometers per second across the star system to transit planetary bodies. It is fairly uninteractive once you've spooled and launched, but anything you can do on a ship landed or floating in space, you can do while in quantum travel. The main downside to it right now is that you can only jump to predefined destinations, which will be changing soon anyways. Descending down into the atmosphere of planets and moons changes everything. First, you'll experience some cool re-entry effects depending on the thickness of the atmosphere as you transition into atmospheric flight. But down here, your speedy agile fighter might be the worst choice to take into a fight. Every ship flies differently in Star Citizen, and they're all affected by the presence of atmosphere but it's specific to the composition and gravity of that planet that you are on. Large ships have an incredibly difficult time fighting gravity to reach orbit, and many of the larger ships in Star Citizen will eventually not even allow you to land planet side, and will require parasite crafts to ferry you down to the surface. In addition to your ship's size, the shape, aerodynamic design, thruster location, and designated use case will all affect your performance as well. Some ships, like miners, cargo haulers, and explorers, are designed with VTOL engines, meant specifically to allow for easy flight and gravity. Now, this isn't a thing in-game yet, but we will be talking about it soon enough. The main reason that all of these thrusters, and not just the VTOL thrusters, can fly easily in gravity right now, is because of that modeling of the thrust from these thrusters. In order for these ships to maintain a fun style of flight in space, under the more immersive thruster simulation we have, Thrusters are incredibly overpowered and have no problem counteracting the force of gravity because they always have to counteract the force of the inertia we build when we're flying in space. This causes the space flight experience to dampen the atmospheric flight experience. But as I said before, we're going to talk about how that's going to get fixed very soon. In the atmosphere, you'll experience drag and lift simulated across the ship's body. You'll feel your ship turning against you to maintain straight flight travel when you turn if you aren't banking. But again, this differs between ships. You'll feel a difference in flight when you change the shape of your ship if it has transforming structure. And you'll hear and see the effects of your surroundings on your cockpit windscreen. And when you decouple the ship to disable flight assist, you'll have to exert downward thrust at all times to counteract gravity, lending to a more natural and immersive feel. While this has been a decent snapshot of what you can expect from flying ships in space and atmosphere currently, this isn't how ships are meant to fly in this game long term. There are two major features being worked on at the moment that are going to completely change the flight experience, mainly in atmospheric situations, and likely attract more attention from those looking for a deeper, more immersive system. Let's talk about how ships are going to fly in the future. You remember when Star Citizen tried to implement hover mode? It was, in my opinion, a poor artificial limitation on what should be a systemic feature. I explain this theory and plenty of evidence in which CIG at least appears to agree in my supporter exclusive video from September. I make these videos every month for supporters if you're interested. The important part of that mode though was that it was kind of a failure. And like I said, CIG kind of agreed. The old hover mode. Yeah. Some people liked it, a lot of people didn't like it, and it, it was it was the right idea with not quite the right implementation. Um, but they have a better solution planned that will bring back the VTOL advantage as well as other things. The heat system. Longtime players know there is already a heat system in the game, but it's rudimentary and not very effective. It was added back in 3.5, but didn't make as much a difference as the description might have you think. All that time, we also knew CIG was working on what they called the pipe system, now part of the resource management network I covered a few weeks ago. Last summer, John Crew informed us that these systems were being built in tandem. What the heat system is meant to do is be a deterrent against abuse. It's a consequence for either performing outside of your ship's normal operating parameters or not bringing the correct ship in the first place. 
because it's good to remember that some ships only feature downward maneuvering thrusters meant for short-term bursts of power, while others feature downward-facing main thrusters for VTOL capabilities. The heat in your ship will be a damaging element that can build up in these thrusters and other components over time. This heat component applies wear and tear that will need to be repaired regularly, something you can already see in your ship's item component menu. If you don't repair these components and keep them in shape, they can start to fail out, misfire, or eventually stop working altogether. Heat, we don't really use heat at the moment because the way heat works in our game is not, not how we want it to work long term. And this is something with a resource system that is being entirely redone. But like a Gladius, as well as needing that control surface to keep up in the air, like if you're not going fast, those thrusters can start overheating as an extra a penalty because right. in reality, you could just upend your Gladius like that and balance it on its main thrusters. Um, but because they're, they're powerful enough to do that, so they should be powerful enough to do that, but they're going to be working so hard that that heat is going to build up and we can cause intentional problems doing it that way. So if you're running your thrusters too hard for too long, you may find that your ship no longer responds how you expect it. That applies to space combat and flight as well, but will be exceptionally noticeable in atmosphere, where your ships will always be working to stay aloft. With the proper visual and audible feedback, players will be aware of the stresses on their ship after pushing the limit for some time. This may encourage players to pay more attention to their landing, possibly catering certain areas or planetary situations to be more challenging, while also providing players with wiggle room to take a bit longer, make mistakes, or use landing assist in the form of an AI blade. It draws attention to an action without artificially limiting it. And this heat will be made even more important when your ship becomes aerodynamically driven rather than thruster driven. This major change to the flight model will come in the form of control surfaces. We know that basic forms of drag and lift as well as thruster efficiency curves were added to ships back during the flight changes of 2019 and 2020. And while these effects are noticeable when turning at high speed or pushing the upper speed limit in atmosphere, they do not simulate atmospheric flight quite how CIG would like. Richard Towler explains. At the moment, we have aero surfaces on these ships, but it doesn't fly like a plane. So they're still driven by the thrusters. The thrusters to generate the, the performance in space have to be set in strengths. Um, it, it has to generate the accelerations that we require in space. Well, we, we still need quite strong thrusters, which means you can hover quite easily. But that's not always going to be the case. So in the future, we are going to move towards control surfaces. Um, and this is going to allow us to move the movement of the ship from thrusters to aerodynamics. So if, so if you're flying a Gladius, for example, and you, and you go really slow, it's just not going to have the power to kind of keep it up. And that's where the VTOL ship is going to come in, where they can transform and fly in VTOL and hover. And that's where they'll have the advantage. Um, but we need to add control services first and work out how we do all the controls um, with that as well, because it's quite a complex problem to solve. So as these ships become more aerodynamically driven and dependent on the speed of your ship as you fly, the more conscious effort it's going to take to be an efficient and skilled pilot. It won't always be about going fastest, and it won't always be about taking your time. Planetary flight will become a much deeper segment of the game that many players may just choose to avoid. This goes back to the fact that the more aspects of the game players want to specialize in, the more reason there will be to hire players or NPCs to complete certain tasks, driving the economy forward. But that's a different topic. These aerodynamic control surfaces will bring much more meaning to the specific ship you fly. The arrows, sabers, and gladius of the verse will be able to cruise around in the atmosphere, while something like a Caterpillar MSR or 400i might struggle much more to stay up to speed and generate lift. But even those small agile ships won't be able to float around stationary forever. And ships definitely won't be able to float pointing straight down for an extended time, as the heat system we discussed will combine with these control surfaces to force people to move and take advantage of aerodynamics to take some of that load off of the thrusters. Ships like the Raft, Prospector, Starlifter, or Cutlass will all have a much easier time maneuvering and landing due to this combination as well. So just like the resource management system we looked at this month, the flight model will continue to develop 
and should be something you keep in mind when considering the gameplay you're interested in and what ships you're thinking about buying. If you always plan to stick to space, your options are limitless. But if you plan on seeing the cities, outposts, beautiful planetary surfaces, and upcoming underground facilities of the verse, VTOL ships may end up being where you land. No pun intended. And this isn't even getting into the larger ships which are already not rated to fly in atmosphere. These flight changes will dramatically change the way we fly and consider the ships we're using. They will be another draw to what specific ship that's just for you. One more criteria that you can check off for your perfect ship, and maybe even a reason that you don't need a ship in the first place, and prefer to always be crew. There will be plenty of ways to play this game casually, but remember that this isn't a do-everything game. It will always lean into building more complexity into each separate segment of gameplay to build a deepening experience that stays entertaining for everybody for hopefully longer than it takes to make the game. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the existing and upcoming features surrounding the flight model of Star Citizen, good news. I do these more historically contextual deep dives into features every month for my supporters with even more studio sources and in-depth explanations. For as little as 3 bucks a month, you can get these exclusive monthly videos and more on Patreon or YouTube and help to support the channel. If you just want more cool Star Citizen content, you can always subscribe to the channel and my second channel where I put out more casual content. And if you're looking to get into the game in style, then check out my current ongoing giveaway to see how you can win a 400i luxury multi-person exploration ship with Star Citizen included. I'll be giving it to one viewer next month and we'll be planting secret codes around my videos until then that'll give you more chances to win. So if you missed this one, rewind and see if you can find it. I hope you learned something new in this video and I'll catch you in the next.